If all you've ever done is popped a can of Campbell's soup, then you've been missing out, my friends, on how good a homemade tomato soup is and what it should taste like. I'm gonna hook that up along with my take on a grilled cheese and what I think it should look like. Let's get into this by dicing up some onions. So go ahead and go over to your cutting board. And with this yellow onion, we are gonna simply cut the ends off of each side. Now go ahead and cut it in half. And now you're going to peel it. You can discard the peelings or save it for stock, totally up to you. And now what we wanna do is medium dice up this yellow onion. And if you have no clue what that means, definitely check out my video on knife cuts. We'll certainly help you there. We're gonna sort of puree all this stuff so the dice doesn't have to be perfect. So it's a rough dice or rough chop, totally cool too. Set it to the side in a bowl and then go ahead and head over to your cooktop. Uh, I've got a decently large pot, about four quarts. Put it right on the burner. We're gonna be on a medium low heat throughout this entire cooking process. We're gonna add in just a bit of butter into this pot. And now pour in your onions. So we're gonna cook these for about 10 to 15 minutes. We're not gonna get a full caramelization like we would with a French onion soup or something like that. But this one's for you Comey's. To speed up this process a little bit, we're gonna add in some sugar. Think what happens when you mix butter and sugar. You get caramel. It's gonna help add some great, great flavor to the onions, help sweeten them up. And of course, sometimes tomatoes can get bitter when stewing them for a long time. So it's gonna help offset some of that too. Just a great add, do it. You'll learn to love it and you'll do it when you start caramelizing onions and other recipes. So after about 12 minutes total, you see they're nice and golden brown, they're translucent. This is a perfect stage. It's exactly where you wanna be, you guys. And at this point, I'm gonna add in some finely minced garlic. Give that a quick stir. And then at this point, I'm gonna add in some canned tomatoes. Now, if you are in peak season, like you're watching this and it's summertime, man, go ahead and check out how you concasse those tomatoes, like in my sort of Pomodoro recipe. That would be unreal if you got some garden fresh tomatoes in this tomato soup, like insane. But on the other side, who eats soup in summertime? So I totally get it. We're gonna add in a little bit of chicken stock to sort of thin it out. You can absolutely use veggie stock or even water, it's totally cool. And we're only gonna cook this for about five to seven minutes. You can break it up with your spoon. Don't worry about trying to get this to a nice smooth consistency because we're gonna take care of that in a few minutes. And after the tomatoes are stewing for about five to six minutes, what I'm gonna do is add in a little secret. Comey's, hear me out again. I'm gonna hit it with some balsamic vinegar. I mean, ask yourself in the summertime, you know, when you eat those tomato mozzarella basil salads and you hit it with balsamic vinaigrette, I mean, how much better and flavorful is that tomato? Because it just takes it to another level. The flavor complexity is so good and it's such an easy add. I mean, most of y'all got balsamic vinegar laying around the house anyways. So hit it with just a little bit of that. Now that it's stewed for that amount of time, I'm gonna puree it. You can use a hand blender if you have one, one of those, you know, one of those type of guys. Uh, I'm gonna use a regular blender because I imagine most of you guys have one of these at home. So this is going to be, uh, well, I guess I should just say be careful because you pour the bowl right into the blender, chances are tomatoes are gonna go everywhere. Um, I'm gonna be laughing and you're gonna be pissed. So what I usually do is either take a measuring uh, cup or a liquid measuring cup, scoop some out and pour it into the blender. Now, if you have a smaller blender, you can absolutely do this in batches. Don't worry about trying to fit it all in there if you feel like you're getting close. So once you have everything in there, now to finish off the soup, uh, before we blend it, I'm gonna add some fresh basil leaves. Man, this is just gonna take it to another level. I mean, it's fresh basil. It's always good at everything for some reason. And for, I don't know, maybe you hate basil, you can actually use fresh thyme too. It will alter the flavor a little bit from what I'm gonna be serving up, but still gonna be absolutely delicious. Okay, so once you have it in there, we're gonna add the lid on top, and this is the absolute most important piece, Comey's again. I've done this in the restaurant industry when I was younger, and it was probably one of the craziest things ever. You know that little center cap, so to speak, that's in the um, larger lid over the blender? Man, remove that because pressure builds up and if you turn this blender on, I mean, you know, LeBron, 
You're gonna have tomatoes everywhere and your kitchen's gonna be trashed. Your spouse is not gonna be happy. Your family's gonna laugh at you. Take it off and what I like to do is just add a sort of kitchen towel right over top. Yeah, it's gonna get some tomatoes in it but you're not gonna blow the whole kitchen up with homemade tomato soup. So, turn it on, start it slow at first and then work your way up. Should be completely smooth. Once it is to this consistency, head back over to that pot, pour it in there. And now what we wanna do to finish off this soup, I'm gonna hit it with just a touch of heavy whipping cream just for some body, a nice little sheen that's gonna go into it. Salt, pepper, give it a stir, boom, you've got homemade tomato soup and you know homemade food tastes way better than anything you're gonna pop out of a can and oftentimes even what you're gonna get at a restaurant. So you can absolutely do this at home. Looking at maybe 25, 26 minutes, you've got this, my friends. So while that soup is cooking or keeping warm, what you could do is make a grilled cheese and that's what we're gonna do. Homemade tomato soup and grilled cheese doesn't get any more comforting than that. I've got some brioche bread, nice sweet, eggy bread that I'm gonna slice up super thick. No mayonnaise on these, so head right over to that pan, add in some butter. As Soon as it's melted, put the bread right in there. Same thing, 90 seconds to two minutes. Give it a flip, you can see they're golden brown. We're gonna get the other side brown, of course. Now what I'm gonna do is add on a little bit of Big jam. This is gonna add some really cool sweetness and complexity to the rest of the grilled cheese. You can absolutely use another jam like apricot or even like an orange marmalade would be super good in this grilled cheese. And now I'm gonna layer this up, starting with some cheddar, then smoked gouda, then last but not least some provolone. And just to take this thing over the top, a slice of prosciutto ham. I'm telling you right now, the flavors in this, I mean, they're just so, so good. I mean, I don't even know what else to say. You're gonna love it. So go ahead and add that other piece of toast right to the top. Let it cook for a few seconds. You want that cheese to start to get nice and melty. We're done. We've got an amazing gourmet grilled cheese. Who knew? But I promise you the flavor in this one is gonna absolutely blow your mind. To plate up, all I want to do is add a little bit of the tomato soup, serve it up in whatever bowl you want. I got a nice little sort of mug here. Then I finish it with some fresh basil. If you're looking for another fantastic homemade 30 minute meal for the fam, then check out my super delicious beef stir fry and I'll see you on that video.